El Anfal, the voluntary gifts. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. People ask you about the voluntary gifts for the advancement of the cause of Allah. Say, the voluntary gifts are at the disposal of Allah and His Messenger to administer. So take Allah as a shield and reconcile your mutual differences and obey Allah and His Messenger if you are true believers. Verily, the true believers are only those whose hearts tremble when the name of Allah is mentioned before them. And when His messages are recited to them, it increases them in faith and in their Lord only do they put their trust. Who observe prayer, and go on spending from that which we have provided for them. It is these who are the believers in truth. There awaits them with their Lord exalted degrees of rank, as well as His protection and an honorable provision. This reward is because your Lord brought you forth from your house for the battle of Babur for a righteous purpose, even though a party of the believers considered it very difficult. These disbelievers disputed with you concerning the truth of Islam, after it had been made clear by signs and proofs. On being invited to accept Islam, they were behaving as though they were being driven towards death, but they will actually be facing death very soon. And, O oh, companions of the Prophet, Recall the time when Allah promised you victory over one of the two enemy parties, the well-equipped Meccan army and the other ill-equipped caravan from Syria, that it should be yours for fighting against, while you wanted the unarmed party to fall into your hands to get an easy victory. But Allah wanted to establish the truth by fulfilling His words of prophecy and to cut off the very root of the disbelievers so that he might establish the truth and wipe out the falsehood, though those who had cut their ties with Allah considered it hard. Recall the time when you, O companions of the Prophet, implored your Lord to aid you in distress, and he responded to you, saying, I shall reinforce you with a thousand of the angels coming in continuous succession. And Allah made this only as good tidings of your victory, and that was so that your hearts might thereby be at rest. For in any case, victory comes only by the help of Allah. Verily, Allah is almighty, all wise. Recall the time when he caused a sort of slumber to prevail upon you, to give you a sense of peaceful security from himself. And he sent down upon you water from the clouds, that he might thereby purify you and remove from you the scourge of Satan, that he might strengthen your hearts, and thereby make your feet firm and strong. It was the time when your Lord revealed to the angels to convey to the believers, I am with you, and he commanded the angels to make those who believe stand firm and fast. And, O believers, I will indeed strike terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. So smite on your enemies' necks and above these, and strike off all their fingertips. This punishment is given them because they have cut themselves off from Allah and His Messenger. And whosoever opposes Allah and His Messenger, as its result Allah too is severe in punishment to such. That is your punishment, so suffer some of it in this life and know that in the hereafter there awaits the disbelievers the torment of the fire. O you who believe, when you meet those who disbelieve in battle array, do not show them your backs. And he that shows his back to them at such a time, unless he is maneuvering in warfare, or as a measure to rally to another company, has truly incurred the displeasure of Allah, and his refuge is Jehenna. What an evil destined end it is. Therefore, in this war, O Muslims, you killed them not. As a matter of fact, it was Allah who killed them. And, O Prophet, it was not you who threw a handful of small stones when you did apparently throw them towards the enemy, but it was Allah who threw, 
that he might vanquish your enemies, and that he might confer on the believers from himself a bounteous favor. Verily, Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. That is what happened at the Battle of Badr, and know for the future, too, that Allah will always go on thwarting the war strategies of the disbelievers. If you, O disbelievers, sought a decision, then such a decision in the form of the results of the Battle of Badr has of course come to you. And if you now desist from persecuting the believers, it is better for you. And if you return to hostilities, we too will return to their help, and your host, though they may be numerous, will be of no avail to you, and know that Allah is with the believers. O you who believe, obey Allah and his messenger, and do not turn away from him whilst you hear him speak. And be not like those who say, We listen, while they do not listen and do not accept. Surely the worst of animal that walk or crawl in the sight of Allah are those that are deaf and dumb, and who are devoid of understanding. Had Allah found any good in them, he would have certainly made them listen to the Qur'an. And if in the present situation he makes them listen, they will turn away, and they are averse. O you who believe, respond to Allah and the Messenger when he calls you to that which will give you life. And know that Allah intervenes between a person and the inclinations of his heart, and that it is he to whom you shall all be gathered, after having been raised to life. And guard against an affliction which surely will not afflict only those of you in particular who have acted unjustly, but it will involve others also who are inclined towards them. And know that Allah is severe in requiting. And recall the time when you were only a few and were looked upon as weak in the land. You were afraid lest the people should take you by storm. But he provided you refuge in Medina and strengthened you with his help and provided you with good and pure things so that you might give thanks. O you who believe, do not be dishonest to Allah and his messenger, nor betray your trust knowingly. And bear in mind that your possessions and your children are but an ordeal, and it is Allah alone with whom there is a mighty reward. O you who believe, if you take Allah as a shield, he will grant you discrimination between right and wrong, as is the battle of Madr, and rid you all of your evil thoughts and deeds, and will protect you against their adverse consequences, for Allah is possessor of great bounties. And, O Prophet, recall the time when those who disbelieve plotted evil against you, and when so devised, they might confine you or kill you or turn you out. And even now they are devising means and methods to harm you, and Allah also devised to counteract their evil designs. And Allah is the best of devisers. And when our verses are recited to them, they say, We have already heard them before. If we so wish, we could certainly compose the like of this. These are nothing but fables of the former peoples. And recall the time when they said, O oh Allah, if this faith of Islam indeed be the truth revealed by you, then rain down upon us stones from heaven, or bring down upon us some other grievous punishment. Allah was not going to punish them so long as you, O Prophet, were among them, nor would he punish them while they were seeking his protection. But what plea have they now that Allah should not punish them when they keep his worshippers back from the holy mosque at Mecca, whilst they are not fit to be its true trustees? Its true trustees are only those who have become secure against evil. But most of these disbelievers know not this fact. How can they be the trustees of the holy mosque as their prayer at the house is nothing but sacrilegious activities like whistling and clapping of hands? O oh, disbelievers, you asked for punishment. Therefore, suffer the punishment on account of your disbelief. 
those who disbelieve spend their possessions to hinder the people from the way of Allah. They will surely continue to spend it thereafter. Then in the long run, this expenditure will be to them a source of regret, and after that they shall be overcome. Such of them who persist in disbelief shall be gathered into Jahannam, so that Allah may distinguish and separate the impure from the pure, and in doing so, he will pile the impure one upon another. Then he will huddle them all together. Then he will consign them, the huddled pile, to Jahannam. Such, in fact, are the very losers. Say to these who disbelieve that if they desist now from persecuting the Muslims, they will be protected against the past misdeeds. But if they revert to their old ways of mischief, then the example of their predecessors has already gone before, and they shall meet the same doom. And, O Muslims, fight them until there is no more persecution in the name of religion, and adopting a certain religion is holy for the sake of Allah. But if they desist, then surely Allah is watchful of what they do, and they will not be done injustice to. But if they turn back and refuse all these terms and fight you, then know that Allah is your protecting friend. What an excellent protecting friend, and what an excellent helper. And know that whatever you acquire on winning a victory, a fifth of it belongs to Allah, to the messenger, and to the kindred and the orphan, and the needy and the wayfarer. This you must observe if you believe in Allah and in what we sent down upon our servant on the day of discrimination between the truth and the falsehood, the day the two armies encountered each other at the battle of Badr. Indeed, Allah is possessor of power to do all he will. When on that day you were on the nearer end, and those were at its farther end, and the caravan of the Quraysh from Syria was on a level lower than yours. And had you made a mutual appointment beforehand, you would have differed with regard to the place and time of the appointment. That Allah brought about that which was already decreed by him, so that he who had already spiritually perished on the altar of reason might perish physically also. And he who has already spiritually come to life through a clear sign might live physically also. Most surely, Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Prophet, recall the time when Allah showed these disbelievers to you in your dream to be only a few, and had he shown them to you as many, O believers, you would surely have been demoralized and would have disputed one with another about the matter of waging war. But Allah saved you. Indeed, he has the best knowledge of that which is in your hearts. And when you encountered them, he made them appear as a few in your eyes, and he made you appear as a few in their eyes, in order that Allah might bring about the thing that had already been decreed. And to Allah all matters stand referred for decision. O you who believe, when you encounter a host, Remain steadfast, and remember Allah much that you may triumph. And obey Allah and his messenger, and dispute not with one another, or you will be demoralized and your strength will depart from you. And do persevere, for Allah is surely with the patiently persevering ones. And be not like those who marched forth from their homes at the time of the battle of Badr. Boastfully, and making an ostentatious display of themselves to the people, and who hindered the people from following the path of Allah. And Allah is the destroyer of whatever they do against Islam. And recall the time when Satan made their deeds fair-seeming to them, and said, Today none among the people shall overpower you, for surely I am your protecting helper. But when the two hosts came face to face with each other, he, Satan, retraced his steps and said, Surely I have nothing to do with you. I see that which you do not see. I am surely afraid of Allah, for Allah is severe in requital. 
This was the time when the hypocrites and those who carried in their hearts a disease were saying, Their religion has deluded these Muslims. But the truth of the matter is that whoso puts his trust in Allah finds that surely Allah is almighty, all wise. Could you but see the angels carrying away the souls of those who disbelieve, smiting their faces and their backs, saying, Suffer the punishment of burning. This punishment is because of the deeds which your own hands have sent forward. And know Allah is by no means unjust to his servants. Their ways are like the ways of the followers of Pharaoh and those before them. They disbelieved in the messages of Allah. So Allah sees them for their sins. Mighty is Allah and severe in punishing the evil done. It happened thus because Allah is one who would never withdraw a favor which he has conferred on a people until they themselves change their own state of mind. And that is because Allah is all the same, all hearing, all knowing. Just as it happened to the followers of Pharaoh, and those before them, so the same fate will meet them, for they had cried lies to the commandments of their Lord. So we destroyed them on account of their sins, and we drowned the followers of Pharaoh, because they were all wrongdoers. Surely the worst of beasts in the sight of Allah are those who denied to believe in the truth in the first instance, so they would not believe. Particularly, those with whom you entered into a pact. But every time they break their pact and they do not guard against the breach of trust. Therefore, if you find these breakers of trust in battle array, then by inflicting an exemplary punishment upon them, disperse those behind them so that they may be admonished. And if you fear and have reasons to fear treachery from a people, then annul their pact on terms of equality. Indeed, Allah loves not the treacherous. And let not those who disbelieve think that they have outstripped us. They shall not be able to frustrate our purpose. Believers, it is your duty also that you keep prepared to meet them with whatever you can afford of armed force and of mounted pickets at the frontier, to strike terror thereby into the hearts of the enemies of Allah and your enemies and such others besides them that you do not know, but Allah knows them. And whatever you spend in the cause of Allah shall be repaid to you in full, and you will not be dealt with unjustly. And if they incline towards peace, you should also incline towards it and put your trust in Allah. Surely it is He who is all-hearing, all-knowing. But if they intend to desert you, remember that Allah surely suffices you. It is he who has strengthened you with his help and with the believers. And he has united their hearts in mutual affection. Had you spent all that is in the earth, you could not have united their hearts so. But Allah united their hearts in mutual affection. He is indeed almighty, all wise. O Prophet! Allah is sufficient for you and for the believers who follow you. O Prophet, urge the believers frequently and strongly to defensive fighting. If there be of you twenty steadfast, they shall overcome two hundred. And if there be a hundred of you, they shall overcome a thousand of those who disbelieve, because these are a people devoid of understanding. For the present, Allah has lightened your burden, for he knows that there is yet some weakness in you. Thus, if there be of you one hundred persevering and steadfast persons, they shall still overcome at least two hundred. And if there be a thousand of you, they shall overcome two thousand by the leave of Allah. And Allah is with the steadfast. It does not behove a prophet to keep captives unless he has triumphed after a regular bloody fighting in the land. If you take captives without warfare, you desire the frail goods of this world, while Allah desires for you the good of the hereafter, 
and Allah is almighty, all wise. Had there not been a prior decree of a war at Badr from Allah, you would certainly have come to grief as a result of that which you were going to undertake by attacking the caravan of Quraysh from Syria. So eat and spend of that which you have acquired after winning the war as is lawful, good and pure, and take Allah as a shield, for Allah is great protector, ever merciful. Prophet, say to those captives of war who are in your custody, if Allah finds any good in your heart, he will give you even better than that which has been taken away from you as ransom and will protect you against your sins, for Allah is great protector, ever merciful. But if they intend to play false with you, remember that they were false to Allah before, but he delivered them into your control, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Surely those who have believed and have emigrated and strove hard with their possessions and their persons in the cause of Allah and who have given them refuge and helped are friends one to another. But you are not responsible for the protection of those who have believed but have not emigrated until they do emigrate. However, if they seek your help in the matter of faith, then it is binding upon you to help them except against a people between whom and yourselves there is a treaty. Indeed, Allah knows well all that you do. And as for those who disbelieve, they are friends one to another. Hence, if you, O Muslims, do not act as has been ordained for you to help one another, there will be persecution and great corruption in the land. And those who have believed and emigrated and strove hard for the cause of Allah and those who have given them refuge and have helped, it is these indeed who are the true believers. For them is his protection against sins and an honorable provision from him. And even those who have believed afterwards and emigrated and strove hard jointly with you for the cause of Allah, they, of course, belong to you. And as to blood relations, they are nearer one to another to inheritance according to the law of Allah. Surely Allah has perfect knowledge of everything.